everybody, I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and unto Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever and all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen. Praise God Almighty. Amen. Well, we have a very powerful telecast to bring to you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're talking about what faith is and this is part of a grand series called Faith Fundamentals. We already talked about at length how faith comes. Now we're talking about what faith is. And so uh, without any further delay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's believe God together for a very powerful telecast this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I do perceive that we are going to have a wonderful time in the Lord's presence and in His words. So amen. We're going to believe God together Amen. For him to speak to us, to all of our hearts this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Let's believe God together. Father in heaven, we praise you. We magnify you, Father. We adore you, Father, this morning, Father. Lord, we declare your glory in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome to have your will and have your way this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, for your anointing this morning. We welcome your anointing. We embrace your anointing. We receive wholeheartedly your anointing. We are yours to command, Father. Holy Spirit, come and make yourself known and operate freely in today's telecast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you right now that a good number of the television congregation that is watching right now are sensing your anointing. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We bless you, we exalt you, we praise you, we adore you. And now, Father, for this remaining time, Father, Lord, we submit ourselves to your anointing. We are yours to command. And we thank you for the anointing to impart your word this morning. And Father, I pray for the television congregation that is watching right now. Father, give them open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word, Father. And Father, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that is going to be accomplished this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a powerful anointing here this morning. So let's just go ahead and get into the word. Okay? Amen. We're talking about what faith is. What faith is. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible tells us, Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it reads as follows. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 in the King James Version. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, in the Amplified Classic Bible, it reads as follows. Now faith is the assurance the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, another translation says, now faith means that we are confident of what we've hoped for, convinced of what we do not see. Still another translation says, faith is giving substance to things hoped for. Amen. In other words, it's our faith. Amen. Our faith in God. In fact, let me say it this way. Your faith gives substance to the promises of God that you've hoped for when you believe that you received your petition before you have it. I'm going to say that again. Your faith gives substance to the promises of God that you've hoped for when you believe that you received 
Your petition before you have it. I'm going to say that again. Your faith gives substance to the, promise, to the promises of God that you've hoped for when you believe that you've received your petition before you have it. I'll say that one more time. Your faith gives substance to the promises of God that you've hoped for when you believed that you've received your petition before you have it. Now, one definition that we are working on here, one of the definitions, there's two definitions. Let me give you the first one, and here it is. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'm going to say that again. That's appearing there on your screen. Write it down. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'm going to say that again. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. I'll say that one more time. Faith is taking hold of the unseen realm of hope and bringing it into the realm of reality. Now, we have established that faith grows out of the Word of God. That's so important to know. Faith grows out of the Word of God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Apostle Paul wrote the following under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to the church in Rome, a very powerful scripture in verse 17 of Romans chapter 10. He wrote the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'll say that again. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. One more time. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. This is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, the Lord Jesus Christ made a very powerful declaration in this portion of Scripture. Amen. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus made the following declaration to his disciples for the honor and glory of the Lord. He made the following statement. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. That's the King James Version of Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Amen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, in the Amplified Classic Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ made the following declaration right here in the Amplified Classic Translation. Look at what it says here in the Amplified Classic Bible of Mark eleven twenty four. 24. This is what Jesus said. For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Okay? Verse 24 again. For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Again, verse 24 in the Amplified Classic Bible Translation, uh, Mark eleven twenty-four. 24, Jesus declared the following, for this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, Believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Amen. Now, the second definition that we have been giving to you concerning faith is this. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident of the promises of God already granted to you. Notice that statement. Write it down. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident of the promises of God already granted to you. I'm going to say that again. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident of the promises already granted to you. Amen. 
Praise God. That's a very powerful statement there. That's a very powerful definition that you need to know. Faith is believing, trusting, and being confident of the promises of God already granted to you. Amen. Now, you know, uh, the Bible tells us, and, and let me read some scriptures here. Let me read two portions of scripture. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5 in the King James and in the Amplified, uh, it reads as follows for the honor and glory of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5. In the King James, it says this, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Isaiah writing concerning uh, what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. The work that was done on the cross by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It reads as follows. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now, in the Amplified Classic Bible of Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5, it, it reads this way for the honor and glory of the Lord. Verse 4 of Isaiah chapter 53 in the Amplified Classic Bible. Surely He has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered Him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God, as if with leprosy. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, for our guilt and iniquities. Let me read that again. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Praise God. Now, in Psalms chapter 103, verses 1 through 5, look at what the psalmist wrote here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. In Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5 in the King James Version, it says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. Now, I read these scriptures because I want to say to you of the fact that God has already purchased these wonderful promises for us through the redemptive work of the cross. All we need to do is to believe and receive what God has already provided. That's all we need to do. We need to believe and receive, amen, those promises that are already granted to us. Amen. We are to believe, we're to trust, we're to be confident, and we're to receive the promises of God already granted to us. All we need to do is release our faith and say, the promises of God are mine. I take them right now. Hallelujah. The promises of God are mine. I take them right now in Jesus' mighty name. All of the promises of God are mine. They are mine. I believe and receive and appropriate that the promises of God are mine right now. They are mine. I take them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24 in the King James and in the Amplified, he declared the following to his disciples. A very, very powerful portion of scripture. Jesus declared the following for the honor and glory of the Lord. He said, watch this, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Notice what Jesus said one more time right here in Mark chapter 11, verse 24 in the King James Version. Therefore, I say unto you, 
what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. In the Amplified Classic Bible, Jesus declared the following in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, in the Amplified Classic Bible translation, verse 24, For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. <laughs> I like this. For this reason I am telling you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every promise recorded in the Word of God is already bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of the promises of God belong to us right now. It is up to us. It's up to us. It's up to us to believe, receive, and appropriate the promises of God right now in Jesus' name. Remember Hebrews 11, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, let's move into... And let's talk about two individuals, Thomas and Abraham. Uh, let's put it under the premise, and it's going to appear there on your screen, Thomas's faith versus Abraham's faith. Okay? Write that statement down and never forget that. Write it down. Thomas's faith versus Abraham's faith. Thomas's faith versus Abraham's faith. Now, in John's Gospel, chapter 20, and we're going to begin with verse 19. Amen. And um, we're going to do verses 19 and 20, and then we're going to jump down to verses 24. Uh, and we're going to do verses 24 through 29 for the honor and glory of the Lord. Amen. Now, starting with verse 19 of John's Gospel, chapter 20. Amen. It reads as follows for the honor and glory of the Lord. John's Gospel, chapter 20, starting with verse 19. Look at what it says here. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now, let's jump down to verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto, unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26, And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Now let's go to Romans chapter 4. And let's read about Abraham for the honor and glory of the Lord. Romans chapter 4, amen. And let's go ahead and let's start off, amen, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Let's start off, amen, uh, verses 16 through 21 for the honor and glory of the Lord. Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. This is the Apostle Paul writing a 
biography, if you will, a little mini biography concerning Abraham's faith to the church in Rome. And so the Holy Ghost inspires the Apostle Paul to write the following to the church in Rome for the honor and glory of the Lord. Verse 16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope. Now, another translation says it this way, who against natural hope believed in supernatural hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Now watch this, verse 19, 20, and 21. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Amen. Now, if you were to ask me, Pastor Gill, <laughs> which is, we read Thomas and we read, we read Abraham. Who had Bible faith? Thomas or Abraham? Well, the answer is this. Abraham had the Bible faith. He had the Bible faith. Thomas simply said, I won't believe that Jesus is risen until I see his hands and the print of the nails of his hands, and I touch the print of the nails of the hands and, and see his side and thrust my hand into his side. When I do these things, then I will believe. That's where we get the expression, I won't believe it until I see it. Was Thomas's faith Bible faith? No. Bible faith was Abraham's faith. Again, verse 16 of Romans chapter 4, watch this, verses, verse 16, verses 16 through 21 of Romans chapter 4, it reads, I'm going to read this again, watch this, look at what Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, writing about Abraham, watch this, therefore it is of faith, this is Romans chapter 4 starting with verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, what was the faith of Abraham? Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope. Again, who against natural hope believed in supernatural hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, now watch this, here's the, here's the key here. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now look at verses 20 and 21. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now, how was he strong in faith? Verse 21 gives us the answer. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Verse 21 again. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Amen. Now watch this. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he is also able to perform. Now that's a statement that's going to appear there on your screen. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, 
he is able also he was all he was able also to perform. I want to say that again. Faith is being fully persuaded at what God had promised. He is able also to perform. I want to say that again. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He is able also to perform. He is able also to perform. He is able. He is able also to perform. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He is able also to perform. Never forget that statement. Write it down. Faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He is able also to perform. In other words, Abraham's faith is Bible faith. It's based on this portion of Scripture and being fully persuaded. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Faith, Bible faith, faith is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he is able also to perform. Amen. We see here in this scripture that Abraham is mentioned as having a faith that pleased God. Now, next week, we're going to get into uh, this statement as Abraham is mentioned. He's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, verse, uh, he, he's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, amen, of having a faith that pleased God. And it's important, amen, that we please God with our faith. Remember, faith, we remember one definition, faith is believing, trusting, and being confident of the promises of God already granted to us. This new definition, faith, is being fully persuaded that what God had promised, He is able also to perform. Can you shout a good amen, somebody? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you, Father. Thank you for our time that we've had here together. We praise you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. God be with you in Jesus' name, amen.